Bristol Flyers podcast. Hello, welcome to the Bristol Flyers podcast, powered by Web Gains. This is episode number 66. 66! Clickly click. Uh, I'm Joel Osborne. This is Sam Hardy. We need to start finding the bingo names for all of those um, numbers, Joel. So it's all 66. Any ideas, Dan? Oh, you ain't got microphones over there, don't you? Because <laughs> we got a couple he's, of guests in the studio. Or he's still been, he's still in trouble from the last time. Yeah. Is that what it is? Dan is back from the naughty step. We haven't quite given him a microphone just yet, but maybe we'll give him a microphone later on in the show. Who knows? <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, whether you're listening on all major podcast providers and YouTube, we're very happy to have you with us. As always, uh, we've got episodes coming your way every single week, but the days of the week uh, are all over the place at the moment. We're actually recording this on a Monday, aren't we, Sam? Yeah, that's my bad though, mate. I'm, I'm heading. <laughs> Off to Dublin for three days, so we had to fit one in before I got my Guinness on. Yep, so we are recording off the back of that weekend triple header at home, uh, which we'll talk about later on in the show. Uh, coming up on this week's show, uh, we've got uh, not one, but two guests in the house. We're talking Flyers home triple header, including the capacity crowd for Flyers women, which is great to see. Uh, we've got quick fire questions, we're rounding up the latest news, plus we'll be diving into some of the questions from the mailbag. But without further ado, Sam, it's time for us to introduce this week's guests and we've got not one but two of the Flyers first team players in the house. We are very pleased to be joined by none other than Bristol Flyers captain Raphael Thomas Edwards and Flyers forward Royal Graham Bell. The boys! How you doing good gentlemen? Are we doing alright? Hey, good, good, we're good. We're good. Thanks for joining us uh, on the podcast as always. Uh, Raph, this is your second podcast in as many weeks because of course we were on the Jay and Drew podcast last week. Yeah, yeah, I mean I guess... Mouth close to the I microphone, Raph, come on. I'm media training. <laughs> I was going to say I do it all the time, but yeah. apparently not. <laughs> but yeah, we've been on a couple of podcasts over the last couple of days. A couple, couple of days, was it? A week ago? It was a week ago, yeah. Yeah. How did you uh, find it? Yeah, it was good. It's not as good as, uh, you know, the Bristol Flyers podcast, but... This guy. Yeah, they did what they had there you go, see? I heard Joel was slagging me off on that podcast, saying you know I don't do any set, prep. They set us up, because this first question, before even asking my name, was who would I pick between the two of you? And Joel was there. So Literally, that's the first question and who, he said. And, and who did you pick? Raph? Oh, I picked you, of course. No, you did not. <laughs> I, can, I can confirm you actually picked me. Yeah, I know he did. And I don't know why, because... Um, I don't, Sorry, I don't we all know, know the truth. We know the truth. We know the truth. Yeah. Uh, so, we've, we've got around 15 minutes with you, Raph, because uh, in, a, in a moment, you are actually going off and doing some work with our partners at the sales trainer, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, you know, basketball isn't going to last forever, so we're going to put a bit of hands there, hands there, put my foot in everywhere, like... Know, like you've seen with the commentating and stuff, so we're going to try and learn as much as I can today. Yeah. What sort of things are you sort of uh, diving into? Do you have a rough idea? Or um, was it all very much a surprise to you? It's a surprise. You know, I had uh, tried to figure out what we were going to talk about, and apparently it's going to be a surprise, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you mentioned there about the um, the commentary side of things. Obviously, that was a big topic, talking point from the Jay and Drew podcast uh, last week. Um, but you two both have something in common because you've both sort of dipped your toe into the commentary uh, waters in uh, recent weeks. Of course, uh, Raph, you've done games with uh, us at the British Basketball League Studios. And uh, and Ro, you were recently a guest on uh, Flyers TV for our game against Svenborg, weren't you? Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> How did you find it? Obviously, it's, uh, it's very uh, new to you guys. Is that something that you guys would be interested in pursuing post-playing career? Or is it just to see what it's like sort of thing? Uh, Dabble in it, not scared to really try anything, and um, yeah, it was fun. Like it wasn't um, stressful or anything like that. I feel like it was definitely easier doing like focusing, especially as my team, and I know the guys like on and off the court. So yeah, like um, getting to dabble and try it out, definitely. Like I definitely have something I would try. Yeah, you don't have to do much research, do you, really, for Flyers TV? Because you just you know, know it. Yeah, you just know. Yeah, you just know the guys already, right? You, you were, if you've not seen it, you need to go back and watch it because you were so funny. You were just like chill, and you were saying random things that I suppose media trained commentators would always yeah. say. <laughs> You're just saying like, I don't know, and it was actually well funny. Wasn't yeah. it? It, it was funny because we had him as like guest commentator for the game, and every time like Trey John Jacob was like doing a dunk, we had to like mute Rose Mike because he was like going. Ooh. Ooh. As you should. <laughs> As he was you like should. loving what it. What do you mean? He was yes. absolutely As loving it. Should. But obviously, Raph, you've done the games with us up in, up in Ealing, haven't you, this season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, anyone that knows me for years, um, it's not in my personality, uh, but I think it's something that I'm kind of growing into, which I think is interesting because if I was to pick one person 
who could be like that personality and do the, the commentary, I think it would be real well. Like knowing and speaking to him, this guy loves to talk, loves to talk. <laughs> so like, I think it's interesting, but I definitely think when you do it, there's so many like intricate things that just come from the experience of doing it. So I think if it is something that, you know, either one of us end up doing, it's gonna take, you know, a couple of cycles of, uh, you know, trying it out and figuring out how to get better. What was the biggest learning curve for you going in and doing an Ealing? Like what's some of the things you weren't expecting and you know, that sort of thing? Um, if I like again, if I was sitting there just talking to my friends, I could probably tell you, okay, this is happening, this is happening. But then it's the timing of that certain things. It's realizing that you know, if I cut Joel off or I say something at the wrong time, I don't think it flows as well as it should. Um, some of it is it's an entertainment piece. I think right now I'm kind of missing the conversational thing. I could go back and forth with Joel a bit more, but you know, it's just a work in progress. There's probably things that I'm not even thinking about that could be way better, that just come with doing it over and over and over. How's the producer in your ear as well? Like you have oh to listen to them as well and yeah. then try and well, talk, that, it's crazy. Well, I, I was about to say, because obviously for Flyers TV, we have producer Dan, but he's very quiet, he doesn't really say much in our ears for Flyers TV. When we do the British Basketball League games, I mean, just like yeah, a bit of, con bit of context it, for the listener, like you have like a lot of voices going on, don't you? Yeah. So essentially, just to sort of put it into perspective, you have a director, but basically talk, he talks to the camera operators. So he's saying like two, one, two, three. Okay, three now live, things like that in your ear. And then you've got someone doing countdowns for you, usually your female voice, so you can differentiate the two. So it's basically saying how long you have on this, on this uh, graphic, how long you have countdown to the break, and they'll literally count you down. Break in five, four, three, and you're having to basically finish your link to the ad break or the VT before you get to zero. <laughs> I'd love to be able to like show, like put this into a bit more context because it's really hard to understand just Raph and I wouldn't be able to know you'll know about it but like when you actually watch TV you don't realise how many voices there are in your ear and then there's like more more voices even saying things like okay we've got um, fixtures coming up on screen now talk through the fixtures things like that I was like we, we did one with um, our producer Sammy who does the stuff at the British Basketball League and he was like we're going to do um, there was like a Josh Steele dunk before it was, it was a game you and I did he put it on TikTok actually it's like a behind the scenes and it's like him in the studio and it was like okay we're going to do a hard count off the off back of this break because Josh Steele just got a dunk against Sheffield um, and they wanted to run the replay but they wanted to run the replay into the ad break so then like right you're going to do um, uh, a hard count into this ad break uh, eight seconds last shot is kids so basically you've got to keep talking until you see kids on the screen celebrating and that's your link to that's basically your cue to rap whilst you've got the countdown going on your ear it's it's yeah. mental, isn't it? It is crazy. It is crazy. You think about it, Dan. Do you? I know you don't have a mic, so you can just have to stick your thumb up. If so, but how easy would it be to record the voices of the producers as well, so you could hear what sort of is happening in the background? He's mm. he's, he's nodding. He's kind of okay. half shaking. He's nodding his head. Like yeah, yeah. You can probably do it. Maybe we'll do it for a Flyers TV potentially. Yeah, behind time. the scenes. Why not? Yeah, a little bit behind the scenes. It'd be very good. Um, and obviously, Rath, the new thing for you guys this season as well, when you we do the games, is that you're doing it. You're not even in the arena. You're doing it, you know, in a booth, aren't aren't you? It's it's really hard to sort of create that excitement and sort of be able to see what's going on because essentially you're watching the same thing on screen as uh, the viewers at home. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I don't have the experience of the other sides. I couldn't tell you exactly what the difference would be, but definitely when I'm playing, you feel the crowd. You like feel like the tense moments, but when you're kind of in the booth, it's like you're watching the game film back but like you can't pause it. It's just, it's just a weird dynamic, but I think it's one of those things that, you know, you just gotta, you gotta deal with. We, we have it where Aaron, um, who on the day is like a match manager, is that what it is? And he's got the headset speaking to the producers in Ealing. And we have it sometimes where we're talking to the referees or listening in to try and work out. And then I'm relaying to him so that he can tell the producers, because you guys don't even always know what's happening, uh, what the call was or, or what's going on. Do you the know what I mean? The big one is like technical fouls, I think. Like if there's a technical foul, it it can get like you know because you can't see it all the time. Sometimes it's called off screen on a coach or a bench, uh, and the, the camera is pointing at another player. So then Aaron in the headset would say to the producer, "Okay, there's been a technical foul on Surrey bench, for example." And then which there was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, which <laughs> and we was. had no idea why. Yeah, <laughs> whereas a technical foul on Surrey bench, um, and then they would relay that into my ear, and then I would be able to say what's happening. You see what I mean? So there is a lot of like. 
moving parts there to make that work. But if you're in the arena, it's easier because you can sit there, you can feed off the energy, and then you can look around and sort of see what's going on as well. It's pretty cool. What's been the biggest challenge, do you think, Raph, for like doing the, the commentary side of things for you? What's been the, the toughest thing about it? Um, I think playing as well. I'm going to have to see these guys like, <laughs> yeah. the next week or a couple of weeks. So it's finding the balance between, you know, staying competitive, staying in that player role and like, oh, he couldn't do that. He couldn't do this or he shouldn't be doing that. And like actually being, uh, you know, taking my emotions out of it and saying, okay, this that was a good shot for this guy. He's he's actually really good at this. And they're not giving them so much confidence that when you play them, now they're like looking to kind of go at you. He's saying, you bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I heard you talking about me on the broadcast last week. You said my foot goal percentage was rubbish. <laughs> to be honest, the people, that, the people that have spoke about it the most are the refs. They'll be like, oh, you know, I, I saw you won the commentary and da, 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 which I can deal with that. But when it's, if it's a player, I, again, you don't know how they're going to react to it. So it's just about, uh, actually, I think just the thought of that. Does it really matter? Like, are they really being that intent? But, mm -hmm. you know, as a player myself, all it takes is a little moment. Someone said something a little out of character. I've got to see him again. I'm going to use that when I'm playing them. So, like, I don't want to give them any fuel. Yeah. It's, it's a weird one. Like, last night, uh, or yesterday, sorry, Aaron Rye was doing the commentary for our game against Surrey, and he just played against us the day before on the Saturday. That must have been a bit weird for him, or even quite nice to have the insight of, like, how you guys will play. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, when you just play the team, I know the first time we, uh, the first time I did it, it was Newcastle and, do you remember the first game? Uh, Newcastle and Plymouth, I think. No, uh, no, it, it wasn't. No, Sheffield. Right. Sheffield. Manchester. 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 Yeah, that's right. That's and we right. just played them. I know a lot of the guys. It's easier to kind of figure out, this guy does this, this is the kind of play they're going to play. But then we went to Sheffield, Surrey, and we haven't played Sheffield for a while. Sorry, we hadn't played for a while and I hadn't been really watching their games as intently as I should have. So then I, I can do research before, but it's not the same insight as I had when we just played this team. And I know the guys, know the tendencies, so like they're to mind as opposed to like I have to look on the sheet. And by the time I looked on the sheet, you know, Joel's already on to the next thing. And like Joel does a great job of doing the research. And because, you know, he's doing so many games, the flow's better, but like I'm still trying to figure out you know, where I can pull from. So yeah, if, if we're uh, in the flow of the season, or if I were to do this, uh, you know, over and over, I think I would have to watch every single game intently, which again, then I'd have to figure it around like uh, our schedule, like, because mm -hmm. we've got to look at the team we're playing, which is more important than the team I'm commentating for. So, you know, it's a balance. Yeah, you've done two games so far. Um, uh, and a bunch of the players around the league have actually had this opportunity. So obviously you speak about Aaron Rye, he's done it. Jordan Taylor's done it. I've actually got a game with Evan Walsh this Friday. Evan Walsh from, from Manchester, Manchester Giants. Yeah. yeah, it'd be interesting. But it's good giving these guys opportunities. And we spoke about it well on the, you can go listen to the Drew and Jay podcast, but like giving players opportunities to be able to try this while still playing, because a lot of them will move into that sort of field post their playing career. Yeah. Anyway, Raph, it's, uh, it's almost time for you, Raph, to go do your sales trainer training. So uh, we will let you uh, get off and uh, enjoy that. Is there anything else uh, you want to say to the Flyers fans before you uh, hit the road? Um... No, I mean, <laughs> it just kind of put me on the spot. I thought I had a couple more minutes, but you know, I got but well. Okay. Yeah, like you said, he can okay. uh, he can take over. Enjoy. Yeah, we're gonna have RGB with us in the studio. But uh, Raf, uh, enjoy your sales training, uh, and we actually we want to we should probably get him back on at some point and hear all about it, right? Yeah, I want to. Yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be good. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah, yeah pressure. That'd be great. <laughs> right, Raf, we'll let you go, and then we'll do the rest of this pod with RGB. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Welcome back to the Bristol Flyers podcast. And uh, Raf Thomas Edwards has gone to do his sales training with the guys from Sales Trainer. Shout out to them, by the way. They were the game day sponsor for our game on Friday, uh, Saturday, weren't they? They absolutely were. He was actually in the room. I'm having a little listen while we were just doing that first little segment. So a little behind the scenes look at the podcast before yeah, it comes out. Yeah, eh? a little unique, little special, little behind the scenes look, Joel. Yes. We've got producer Dan back now, by the way. He's got a microphone again. I'm back. How are you? Yeah. I'm okay. Off the I'm, naughty step from last week, yeah, mate. Yeah, I'm off the bench now. I'm back in. Yeah, because of course, uh, if you are listening to the podcast, um, Dan made a boo-boo on our Keely Johnson episode. What is it you actually did? It's like an override system. I just left a button on that means we can do stuff in the background so nobody can see what we're doing in the studio. It's a bit like a, putting a... Pu pulling the curtains over the over the window so nobody can see inside and I left the curtains closed. 
<laughs> so, um, have you learned your lesson though? Yeah, I have learned my lesson, <laughs> and I can only apologise. There we go. Apology accepted by the Flyers family. We have got RGB back with us in the studio, by the way. He's uh, with us now for the duration of the uh, episode. Uh, Ray, we were just talking uh, off air, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, we we're going to get tickets to Sam's comedy chest pretty soon. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, why are you nervous? Like, I wanted to come to the last nervous. one. Nervous? It's not that. I've said it before. It's a different version of me when I'm on the stage. Uh, that's okay. what I want to see. I feel like I know what it is. That's what I want to see it. That's it. Chris, Dan's going to come, aren't you? Yep. Yep. Me and you are going to be there, Joel, I think. Yep. If you even try and heckle me, Dan, what are you going to do? He's what gonna, are you going to do? I, He's going to ruin you. I have the microphone. <laughs> You'll be this feeble little man in the middle of the crowd and I will shout things at you. Is this the side of Sam we're seeing already here? This is quite a, It's quite aggressive from you. Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Dan, how's your show lay package coming on? You done some Lithuania research? Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. So we found out about this at the end of last week. That's right. Show lay. That's yeah, right. I'm looking forward to finding out all about Lithuania. So obviously we have our two games uh, against show lay coming up in the European North Basketball League. Um, we've put some dates to them for the home game, Ooh. which we're expecting to be in March. I can't say much more than that. Um, but watch this space. We're hoping to actually announce it this week. And then obviously they'll go on sale. Uh, keep it on the Bristol Flyers website, bristolflyers.co.uk. There'll be a priority period for season ticket holders and members to get their tickets first before general sale. Because, of course, it won't be a season ticketed game because it's a European game. So keep it on the website and you'll find out very, very soon indeed. And do we think it's going to be a sellout, Joel? It will be a sellout. Yes, yes. we do. Yes, it will, it, will be, it will be a sellout. Um, Ro, let's talk a little bit about yourself. Of course, um, you're in the boot still. Get oh, it up yeah. on the. Get it up there, go on, mate. Oh, no, yeah, can, can, can show us the just, boot. Just, just, just. <laughs> can, you, can, you get it? can you show us or not? No, no, no. You don't want. <laughs> you're still in the boot, though. Um, I'm, out, I'm out this week. I hope. You out this week? I believe so. Yeah. So how um, was the whole? Like, obviously, a, a lot of fans would have seen you walking around, putting weight on it yeah, now at the games of the weekend. Good signs. Uh, the, the amount they're seeing, I'm doing. They're like. Why are you in the boot? And then I'm just like, I'm, you know, like, I'm doing good. I'm doing did good. you get to choose the color of the boot? I did. It was red originally. Um, had to get it changed due to like a crack in it or whatever. Um, changed it to blue. And I was going to go pink just to pee some people off, I'll be honest. Like, I was, I was, to go, yeah, I was to just do something wild because like, it's only a week left. Yeah, yeah. Well, Flyers, yeah. Flyers pink works, doesn't it? It matches the, matches the home home kit. Who ah, you... it's pink with glitter. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not then. Yeah. Maybe not then. Yeah. Um, so talk us through the next steps then. So the boot comes off. What happens next? Um, I believe it just, well... I get my results on MRI, and um, that's on Thursday, I believe. So, so is that to determine any li ligament damage and things and like all that? All that other stuff, just the extent of what's going on, but everything else in terms of bone-wise is perfectly fine, and um, that's the main thing. Yeah. Your results, so does that mean you've you've had it? Is you, you're not gonna have I've, another one on Thursday? I've had, yeah, I've had results on the bone situation, had X-ray like, and CT scans, um, but yeah, then I'll be having, I had the MRI, and that's the results now coming back for that. Just the the final check. Yeah. And, um, and then yeah. rehab starts. I mean, it started already. It started already? Yeah, it started already. Has uh, it? I've been in the gym, like, religiously. Is it? Yeah, probably a bit too much. What sort like, of things you do, What sort of things you doing right now? Well, he's obviously uh, doing his rehab, isn't he? I'm doing, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one, yes, mate. I like, I like that that's one. Why I like that that's why I'm coming to the comedy show. That's why I'm going to be there. That's why I'm going to be there. Um, <laughs> where I'm on the bike already, like, and nice. He was surprised on that, but he just put the cast in the like the holster and you just go like that's it. Um, everything else like normal, honestly. Um, mm. Believe it or not, I'm doing a formal squat. So oh really? Yeah, not like original like regular squats, but I'm doing a formal squats so anyway. Is that because uh, you're not the actually putting weight through it in a in a one direction is exactly. not the issue? It's yeah. the rotation which is the issue. Uh, even that, that might not be an issue, which we're going to find out. So mm. this is what I'm saying, you know what I mean? So it's just like, it could be like you take the cast off and it's like, let's just get to the rehab and mm. go through the process. Have you thought about like documenting your journey at all, like vlogging or anything like that? I have. I've kind Are you doing of, it? Oh yeah. Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, let's discuss uh, this off air a bit yeah, more. I mean... Yeah, I'm. I'm probably gonna get. <laughs> no, that's cool. We can talk. About, we can talk about it. I'm oh. gonna get killed because so, like I've had people tell me like, "Yo, like do it," and I'm just like, "Okay, but then no." <laughs> hey, uh, hey, you got content. You got media team here. We can hit it. Yes. We can bring it to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can make it 
quality. You can, yeah, be I don't know. Content. I just don't want it to be cringy if I was to do it. Hey, so I don't do know. cringy. He listened to the podcast. Have you <laughs> seen some of his TikToks? He <laughs> does <laughs> do cringy. Oh, yeah, see? You see? You don't want, to, don't want cringy. Nah, we can make nah, it sound He won't do that. Can, like, yeah, I just want something cool, relaxed. Like, that is me. And if I was to do it, yeah, it's never too late. So we can still do that. Yeah, cool. Well, we'll, we'll, talk, about we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. I'll have a discussion off air. All right, let's go. Cool. Um, here's the big question that I imagine a lot of Flyers fans have been asking you Any mm. idea of a return to play? Are you going to give me the PC answer? PC. PC answer. I yeah, thought it would be. Yeah, PC. Um, <laughs> we'll just wait and see. We're going with the time and process. Ah, I love the answer. Yeah. Well media trained right there, isn't he, Sam? Yeah, he is. But we also all understand that, like, at the end of the day, there's no point rushing it back if it's not 100% ready. Like, th- yeah. this is your future, your career, your, you know, whatever. Even the rest of your life. If you do something even worse, mm-hmm. it could do something that's really long term. You just don't yeah. want that, do you? Yeah, 100%. That's definitely getting taken into consideration. But we're going to... A time for the process. Fingers crossed. We will see. PC. Yeah. Great PC answer. <laughs> Can't wait to have you back. No, <laughs> in, in three weeks' time, he's yeah. going to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the meantime, mate, you're always welcome on Flyers TV. Of course, we just spoke about the old broadcast stuff. So, you Can't know, we've got the, got the dem, uh, was it, the, the, the Cholet series coming up as well. Yeah. So if, if you're not back in time for Cholet, I don't know Cholet. when you're coming back. So if you're not, if you're not going to Lithuania. <laughs> um, or you, you might travel or you're not traveling. Yeah. So if you, if you, obviously, you know, you go with the team. But if you're not traveling for whatever reason, then you're welcome to be here on Flyers TV as always. Thank you. Thank you. And we need to find out whether they actually sing that, um, that song. Surely, surely, I don't think surely, they do. Well, I don't think they do. That's wrong. They might though, just for the, maybe just for cause, like why not? I heard they've got a big arena, like 5,000 fans. Have you seen it? Yeah, but when we went to Lublin, they had 5,000 fans inside the <laughs> arena and there was about 100 people <laughs> that there, wasn't there? That is true, that is true. We will see. Midweek yeah. hoops, who knows? Yeah. Um, Ro, right, let's bring it back to um, growing up because that was one of my sections to talk about on the uh, on the on the old segment with ref and yeah. originally we were going to talk are about gonna, when are you going to grow up <laughs> <laughs> if only you knew <laughs> <laughs> originally we were going to talk about this with um with with raf but uh, of course uh you and raf actually first met each other did you first meet each other at the under 20s or did you play each other at junior level before that nah, yeah you was definitely better asking this question when raf was here uh, <laughs> um <laughs> uh what he's a year older than me right yeah uh, um you play against each other at we, juniors we at we did juniors we I think I first met him was at Bucknell camp, which okay. is a camp that happens in the summertime um, mm-hmm. for junior athletes. And so, yeah. what team? So obviously he was playing uh, he with was Leicester. With Leicester. He was with a uh, Leicester Warriors. Leicester Warriors. Yeah. And um, yeah, his camp came together with our camp, and we worked out in the summer together. We we like got along him. Um, Elliot Sentence and a few other guys. Pack my guys. Yeah, there's a few of them. I don't want to say all their names, but. Um, yeah, we just got along, and for that whole summer, we was hooping together, like we liked each other. That was mm. my first year, like playing basketball. I think like was my it? first summer, like yeah, yeah. How old were you when you first started then? Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, so you're late, really, to the party. Uh, very late. Very late. Were you? Were you? You must have been like a footballer or something before that, though. Uh, I did boxing. 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 Yeah, like I, even now I like boxing. Like that's top two. Yeah, it's that even that's weird that like you're late to like a team sport sort of thing because some people come yeah. a bit later but they've been doing team sport but you uh, obviously no i did football i did football like i feel like everyone in london does like I just in, generally england like, generally yeah i feel like I wanted, I wanted to say that but yeah i feel like there's a few english people who said that they never did so i just they're not like, english oh not uh, english. say less i'm saying that from now on <laughs> um but yeah no there was a i did football for a long like pretty much the, my whole life and um i found boxing and I was like, yeah, I want to do that. I think it was Rocky when I watched Rocky. That oh, yes. Yeah, it was, it was, I watched Rocky and I was like, you know what? Let me let me give it a try. And then I was like, I was really rocking with it. But then I always wanted to do basketball. It's just there was nowhere to go for it. Like no one directed in London. me. In the UK, like no one directs you. Like even though now we're in the basketball community, we know everywhere to go. You can like click your fingers. I can find somewhere for you in this city. But mm, yeah. if if you don't know people or you, from that like culture of basketball, you have no idea where to go. Mm. And I think even till now, that's probably still a problem. So what team did you play for at junior level? Um, Lucian Thunder, but oh, yeah. now they've converted their name to London Thunder. Yeah. So there, there's, there's, there's a lot about that. I mean, how, how can they be London fans? I, I knew, I saw your face and I was like, yeah, why? <laughs> I honestly, I still see it as Lucian Thunder. Um, probably always will. But um, 
I guess for marketing reasons. Oh yeah, I mean, everyone sure. knows London. Yeah, you know exactly like London. Yeah. To the rest of the, you know, we to the rest of the world, we might as well be the near London flyers because we're only <laughs> two hours away. No, 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 Bristol flyers is definitely on a sick name, isn't it? We're so bad in the UK at travel. Like in America, if they're like, I'm going to go see my favorite band. They're coming to near my town, and they're like a four hour drive away, and they're yeah, so happy nothing. to do that. Yeah, it's nothing. We're yeah. so bad here, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we. Yeah. 30 minutes yeah. <laughs> max. Nah. Uh, no, no, no. There's a few people I'd say who have, who've told me they've traveled, like fans and stuff who said they've traveled like hour and a half to come to a Bristol Flyers game, two hours on a regular basis. Some. I'll give a shout out, by the way, to the Moreland family. Um, they actually reached out to me ahead of the weekend doubleheader, uh, Judy Moreland, um, and her son, uh, Sam Moreland. Um, he is actually one of the fans that is in our little, you know, our like, gifts we do. Yeah, it's like yeah. a gift of him, like going, yeah, like celebrating. But they, I, think they, I think they're based up north, and they watch all of our games on sort of the, you know, anything Manchester sort of side of uh, the country. They're, they'll go to watch our away games because it's local to them. Uh, they oh. actually came down to Bristol for the weekend to watch both games back to back. Are they like, oh. were they from Bristol and then like moved away? I'm not too sure. I, I, I haven't really had a chance to speak to them properly. But um, but obviously Julie reached out because Sam um, has like his photo club and he wanted to get some practice and taking photos. So I said to him, yeah, cool. You can have a camera and you can sit courtside and get some practice and shoot the two games at the weekend. No. Have you seen any of the pictures yet? Uh, they're, so they're going to send some through to us. So I'll see if they can send them through and I'll run them here on the podcast. Nice. So, uh, yeah. Ro just moved us on quite nicely to... Um, Obviously, we spoke about your injury and mm. sort of your road to recovery. Um, as part of that, I imagine you have a fair bit of spare time. Now, you're not actually playing or training right now, no. obviously, apart from the rehab. <laughs> um, but um, you uh, started your own little side hustle in your spare time now, haven't you? Yeah, but <laughs> no, I don't have any free time. <laughs> yeah, Ron like, never has free no, time. There's no, no. He always finds but, time. Um, <laughs> The funny thing is, yeah, I did start the sweet company. Let me get, like, let me get on there for you. You know what I'm saying? So let for the listener, you know what I'm saying? We're all great and bell. We're all great and bell. Has focus, you know what I'm saying? Zoom in on that, Dan. You know what I'm saying? For the listener, Royal Graham Bell has started his own sweet company called yeah, Soak cool. and Drip Candy. Cool, cool. That's for you guys, by the way. Oh, yes! Guys, way. We love guys. sweets on yeah, a podcast. You guys, the These are... Yeah. So, oh, look at that, Joel. you got the little snakes in there. I genuinely... Sweets are my kryptonite in the best way. Yeah, you know that's I mean. good. That's good. That's good. That's open much, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh God! What have we got in here? Dan, do you want something? You yeah, struggle. Chuck me something. Chuck me something. With it. I got it. You got, got it. There you almost. Go. Well, firstly, it had a nice smooth rip off at the top there, yeah. like that, and then yeah, the resealable mm, bag. Very on. nice packaging you got here, yes, right? Thank you, thank you. Thank we you. do love speaks in the podcast, don't we, Sam? Right, Dan. What do you fancy, man? We have our um, resident snack man as well, snack man Matt. Awesome. You'd be chuck, get, chuck me something. So you'll get. Hopefully, you get something. <laughs> not a lace. Don't chuck a lace. That's not going to reach me. Yeah, that's good. You know what? You should have. Oh, oh good catch. Good Called catch. It. Yeah, it's there for you. you oh, I know I'm yes. good. I'm good. I'm still having to take care of my body. Innit? Do you, so. do you ah. like the issue? Is do you package all this yourself or do you have someone do it for you? Um, I'm packaging myself, having to do it in a like, I have to do the whole sanitary stuff in case of obviously, you're, you know, yeah, obviously, you want obviously. to. So, but it's, it's, but it takes it's a lot. That takes a lot of time. Um, but oh, in good. terms of the sweets, the funny thing is, I actually had the sweets preparing before the injury a lot of people like so that's the thing so that kind of put me off also wanting to like launch it like afterwards because it just happened like and i was just like now people are going to think i'm doing it just because of this he's like no that was already on go i had like tons of sweets like brands and stuff, whatever else that like companies reaching out and trying to get stuff going on mm. and <laughs> yeah it just got put on pause like honestly how it's so, okay do you mind if I ask a bunch of questions? Is that all right? If you ask the press, go to the site. <laughs> <laughs> well, what yeah. is the website, bro? Let's plug it. Um, Soakandripcandy.com. Uh, there we go. Soakandripcandy.com. Go ahead. Head, yeah, head, head, head to the website. Go. Get some sweets. You're going to put Corey Samuels out of business at this rate. Nah, man. There's definitely collabs coming. <laughs> I definitely want to work with him. Man, Do with some what collabs. He's got going on. Yeah, 100%. So you, um, did you order all the different varieties of sweets to your no. place then? So it was... I only want to make like combinations of sweets and bags that I liked growing up in school and stuff like that and combinations. So that's like a sour and sweet pack. Like, Ooh. Yeah, the, the, the one I had was just very sour. Yeah, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. I like it. <laughs> but it is sour if you get a sour. That's what yeah. they all hit. It was. Like, I can't go Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
there's also American type sweets in there too, like Mike and Ike's. Um, Ones that you find hard to get over here, or if you um, find them over here, they're well they're, expensive. Yeah, they'll be ridiculously expensive if you was to buy like a bag yourself. And um, yeah, like so you can buy them. To. You can buy them in these like mix packs. And they're about. I mean, I they are. Don't heavy? worry. That they, they are a hundred. I know it's a weird number. One uh, seven sixty. So seven hundred and sixty grams. You can buy them in 760 gram bags. Yeah, they um, will be bigger coming. So the website's launching on Valentine's Day. So if you do want to get a loved one some Soak and Drip Candy, you can do over at SoakandDripCandy.com. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can go get a loved one a nice bag of sweets for Valentine's Day to show them how much you love them. Uh, speaking of snacks, by the way, uh, Sam, here's a funny story for you. <laughs> um, so a couple of weeks ago, we had Keedy Johnson on the podcast, and we were talking snacks, as you do, because we love snacks here in the podcast. And he told us that he loved white chocolate, but he never had a Milky Bar. Yeah, you brought it up, didn't you? You mentioned that he the Milky Bar, and he's like, "What even is that?" And so, uh, so we said to the fans, we called, we put a call out to the podcast listeners: if you uh, want to get Keedy Johnson a gift, uh, get him a Milky Bar, because he's never had a Milky Bar before. Now, our fans are amazing, Sam, uh, because last weekend's home doubleheader, Keedy received. Not one, not two, <laughs> but three Milky Bars from three different Sheesh. fans at our home triple header. Really? After they listened to our podcast. I saw them. Uh, I saw them. Did you taste any? <laughs> no, no, no. He was like collecting I Milky Bars, that, wasn't like, he? I said, they're for Kitty, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so our fans are amazing, and our podcast community has come together to make sure that Kitty uh, samples a Milky Bar for the very first time, because it's absolutely ludicrous how he's never had one before. Now, here's uh, one from Young Flyers fan Henry. Uh, get it up on screen, Dan. And now he spent his pocket money to get oh. Kidi a Milky Bar. Jeez. And here's a video of him on screen now giving him said Milky oh, Bar. Oh, legend. They got a post-game photo together. Okay. There they are in their Flyers Away jerseys. Hey. Incredible. Flyers Away journeys, jerseys at home this week, John. Well, that's because we had the head wasn't it? <laughs> but, uh, but that's yeah. so nice of him. Now, I love that. The only thing is, and there's no, this is amazing that he did it, but I, the, growing up, I remember the Milky Bar kids were the weirdest little, like, s do you remember the rectangle, the what thinnest little chocolate, and, wasn't it? What, the cowboy, innit? The, yeah. The, 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 the yeah. Milky that, Bar kid. Yeah. yeah. Milky Bar kid is strong Have, and Do tough. they use him anymore? I don't think they do. It's now the Milky Bar kid, E. Johnson. Uh, Whoa. Oh, get him guys. on the stage. Yo, get no, him on the stage. Bad. That's bad. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't no, like that one. The nah. Milky Bar Keed. <laughs> hey, he ain't, he ain't gonna like that neither. <laughs> You're gonna have to call him nah, this. I'm, yo. <laughs> you can take that one to the practice I'll, for free, bro. Right. Damn. Here's something else that caught my eye this past weekend, uh, Sam. And this one uh, is from the Bristol Flyers Supporters Club, uh, Sam and Amy. Now, Sam and Amy have featured on the pod a number of times. Uh, we've had them on our Supporters Club end of season awards episode over the last couple of years. Uh, but they have customised their own air horn and cowbell, but they've given it a bit of a Bristol Flyers twist. Get that up on screen, Dan. Uh, here you can see, I love a good pun. So they've got an air horn and they've got a bell. Uh, the air horn is the uh, Tevin <laughs> <laughs> the, the air horn is the Tevin Ollis horn and the cowbell is the Roel Graham bell. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that, Ro? So I'm taking a picture. He's Ro, taking a picture. Ro's yeah. taking a picture. He loves it so much. Ro, what do you think of the Roel Graham Bell? It's, it's creative. <laughs> it's creative. Have I mean, you not I seen that? I haven't seen that. I've heard all the other stuff, but I haven't seen that. So yeah, I'm, yeah I like that one. Love it. I like, that one. I like the Ollie's horn as well. I'm trying to think of that. Any other, 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 any other Ollis. puns? In the team, there's more. I, got, I, I could think of, I mean, kitty one's easy, I think. The Milky Bar Kid? <laughs> no, uh, not that. Like, are, like, are you kidding? You know, <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. We, need, we need to finger some more. That well, was so good. We absolutely love pictures like this on the podcast. So if you've got uh, some pictures that you want to share with the Bristol Flyers podcast, uh, you can send it into us on socials at Bristol Flyers on every social media platform. You can also email us, hello at bristolflyers.co.uk, uh, and we'll feature your pictures pictures on next week's show um is there anything that um you know key to getting all the presents any presents you'd like to be brought row from anyone yeah because i feel like the podcast is now a platform you know we say kitty kitty likes milky bars and all of a sudden he gets three milky bars uh, is there anything you like you know like a ferrari or like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jokes. Uh, no I'm, I'm good i'm good i'm good i'm good let's not, uh, <laughs> I'm good <laughs> 
There we go. Go buy the sweets. Uh, yeah, go, yeah, go, <laughs> go buy the sweets. <laughs> go buy the sweets. That's what that's what Ro wants. Uh, right, Ro, it's time for us to get to our quick fire questions segment. And obviously, we had you do this last time you were on the pod. However, we've given a little bit of a tweak this time, right. uh, and that is because uh, this quick fire questions is all about your fellow teammates. Uh, every answer to one of these questions is one of your teammates. Uh, super simple as that. We had Corey and Pasquale do this on last week's show. They were able to tie the high score of 11. Uh, did you get 11 earlier in the season as well? I feel mate? like I had the most. Yeah, I think you did get 11. I think maybe you tied the high score. I thought 11 was Mike Miller from last season. I think Roe got 10. Oh, Roe did one get off. 10. What? One off. Yeah, it was 10. You're right. Did you deduct one? <laughs> I didn't deduct anything. Right. So let's, let's see if we can beat 11 anyway. If you do beat 11, you get the high score here. And I think this is quite easy to do. Uh, however, I've only written 13 questions down. So hopefully don't get more than 13. Uh, right. Answer, answer, <laughs> we're going to we're gonna do... The thing is, what's hard is we're going to do the questions quick, but you must answer quick as well, okay? Yeah. You've got did, to. did everyone else? Well, no, they did. But, I've uh, you know, if we want to beat the record here... I know you're real competitive, right? Yeah. So if we want to beat the record, we're going to be on our game as well. Because if yeah. we were there, like, being slow, you would never get okay. it, okay? Okay, okay. Just dang, right. we'll get the lights down, please. <laughs> right, Ro, you've got 30 seconds to answer as many of these quick-fire questions as possible. Uh, your time... Are you ready? I'm ready. Your time starts... Now. Who is the best shooter on the team? <sighs> TJ. Who is the best singer? Uh, Tevin. Who's got the best dance moves? Mm, Tijon. Who is the most forgetful? Ref. Who is the locker room DJ? Uh, anyone. Who has the worst fashion sense? Next. Who is the most intelligent player on the team? Tijon. And that is your time. Yeah, that's yo, those yo. <laughs> See yo, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, the thing no is, you know, way. it doesn't have to be the truth nah. though. Yeah, no, nah, but, but, but if you but if you do But I, I ain't just gonna blam out no You know that you know we're gonna clip that up and put it on Instagram and uh, then they're gonna see it or not. Nah, <laughs> nah, I, I just like, choose one player, Corey. Corey, Corey, Corey. <laughs> no, no, but that's cheating though. <laughs> that's, that's definitely cheating. But you um, would have broken the high school. What's the rest of the questions though? I wanna know. Uh what else do I have? Who's the worst free throw shooter? Yeah. Um, actually, no. That yeah. That that's I could answer those. Who go on? No, I mean that's on paper. You know that, so that's easy. Uh, what else? Who spends the most time on their appearance? Who do you think? Mm, not, too to sure. not too sure. Not too sure. That's that's good because you're putting it back on us. Yeah, now. yeah. Well, who, who do you think? Who do From I? From what think? you see, who do you think spends Sam the most? Har Sam Hardy. Nah, not me. <laughs> Look at me. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> go on, go on. Yeah. Who uh, spends the most time on their appearance? Yeah. Tijon. Okay. What's the next question? The questions I haven't answered, I feel like it's only right you guys do. Uh, <laughs> Te Tevin, I'll go to Tevin Ollison for that. Tevin? Yeah. Okay. I reckon he spends a lot of time getting his hair cut. Uh, what about Les? Les does, surely. Les spends hours getting his hair twisted. Yeah, but there's only so much you can twist your hair. So yeah, you gotta let true. it grow too, see? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, true. I did have more questions there, but it's time for us, Sam, to get to the news! This is the Bristol Flyers Podcast. Hey Flyers fans, this is the part of the show where we give a huge thank you to our podcast sponsor, Web Gains. We've got Rob over there in the house, and uh, without their support, this podcast would not be possible. Now, Web Gains is the smart affiliate marketing network who have an unbelievable track record when it comes to empowering advertisers and publishing partners to reach their potential and achieve game-changing results. They connect businesses with top affiliates who can promote your products and services, reaching a wider audience and driving more revenue. And here's the best bit, Flyers fans. WebGains provides you with detailed reports and analytics to track the performance of your affiliate marketing campaigns, making it easy to see the results of your hard work and investments. But don't just take our word for it. Here's Rob from WebGains to tell you more. Did you know that last year affiliates helped sell 12 billion worth of products for British brands? And every one pound spent on affiliate marketing by advertisers also known in our channel as retailers, returned an average of £12.40. That is actually crazy when you spend £1. You get £12 you get back. £12.40 back. It's so good. It's, it's amazing. A good it's a good deal, isn't it? And not only are Web Games sponsors of the Bristol Flyers podcast, but their company logo is also once again on the front of our home and away playing shorts inspiring the team to make smarter connections, just like they do for thousands of brands on their international affiliate network. 
So if you're ready to skyrocket your online presence and drive more sales, visit webgains.com and see how they can assist you in the world of affiliate marketing. That's webgains.com, W-E-B-G-A-I-N-S.com. Give your business the assist it needs with Webgains Affiliate Network. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Uh, right, here's a look at what's been going on around the British Basketball League this past week. And we have to start by talking about the home triple header sound. Oh my goodness me. It was amazing, Joel. It was a real good experience. It was a lot of work, wasn't it? Three sellout crowds at SGS Wise Campus in under 24 hours. Uh, let's start by talking about the women's game first, because... It is an incredible win for the women's side um, over Loughborough Riders. Huge congratulations to them. 71-62, the final score in front of a packed house. Hannah Wallace, Mm -hmm. 30 points. She Mm. tore it up, didn't she, Joel? Incredible. Uh, Yeah, she had, uh, where is it in my notes? 32 points, 6 rebounds and 5 steals. It was officially on the live stats. That's unreal, isn't it? She was balling out. I think at the time we said 30, but on the live stats it actually was 32. Well, I was counting up 32 and then everyone kept saying 30 and I was like, all right. Yeah, no, I think think you're right. Um, But these full-time scenes, get it up on screen, producer Dan. Big packed house at the uh, the SGS College Arena. It's the first time we've ever had a crowd like this for a women's NBL Division One game. Um, it just shows, doesn't it, Sam? The real appetite that there is for uh, for basketball in the city and the potential that the women's program has for us to really push it forward. You know, I look at this program and I sort of think this is where Flyers was probably 2013, just before we entered the British Basketball League, you know, nice. getting crowds like this, um, a solid fan base already in place, it just needs the infrastructure, it just needs the, um, it just needs the funding uh, pumped into it to be able to, you know, enter the Women's British Basketball League. And I really, really, really hope, and I know Lisa Knight has been really been pushing this as well, but I really hope that um, people at Bristol Sport were sort of seeing the crowds there and being like, look, you know, this is a real opportunity to, to grow uh, the women's programme, because you see how bears women's grown as well over the last since the COVID pandemic as well so hopefully you know we can d- do this with the women's program too similar to how we did with the men's program 10 years ago the atmosphere as well was amazing like there's so many and there's so many new faces i think part of the um, beauty and the, the problem with um, sgs is we we sell out and, and it's hard to get new fans through the door or loads of new fans through but this was a great opportunity and selling it out and there was just so many people i've never seen before loads of families and and they were well into it it was so good wasn't it so we actually looked at the numbers here because we did it as a ticket event on the bristol Sports site so the tickets were free but you had to go onto the site to to buy you know a ticket to claim a free ticket uh, and the data shows that the majority of those fans hadn't got a ticket for the cheshire game or the surrey game that weekend as well um march is 12 points nine rebounds she was bullying people inside wasn't she joel yeah and uh had to give a shout out to christina bajika as well 12 points on the bench six rebounds absolutely smashed it she was rolling around she's like diving all over every loose ball and everything yeah she, she was it was really good it was uh it was fantastic and uh, of course oriamadi with seven points and 13 rebounds that's mm. crazy. Yeah, rebounding machine. It's like Bristol Flyers. The DNA is just rebounds. <laughs> the men's and women's sides. Yeah, um, it happens. But if you want to come, if you enjoyed the women's game and you wanted to watch more of the women's team play, uh, you can watch their next home fixture at SGS. It's Saturday, February 24th against the Reading Rockets. Tip-off is at 5 p.m. Entry is free, but you don't need to go onto the Bristol Sports site this time to get your ticket. You can just rock up to the game. Uh, if you enjoyed the game, you know, enjoy enjoyed the atmosphere um let's see if we can recreate it again for reading rockets um in a couple of weeks time uh sam should we talk about the men's doubleheader now nah <laughs> <laughs> uh so i guess it kind of all started on saturday uh cheshire phoenix coming to town um saturday hurt man sad didn't saturday hurt it real hurt like two point loss was it two point in the end it was two point yeah, loss two point loss yeah, yeah. they were it it wasn't even it's was just that fourth quarter, man. We were we were down twenty to four at one in after six minutes in that in fourth, fourth quarter. Yeah. Twenty to four. And we, it, we were looking really good though. So the first half, up to a twelve point uh twelve four lead, raced out the blocks. Uh Cam Christin little carried them back into the game. Mm-hmm. It was a one point lead at the half for Flyers. We held La Quincy Rido scoreless for like the first two quarters who is like the trophy final MVP yep. um, so you know we did a great job on him we sort of did it apart from Kristen sort of scoring more 
most of their points. Yeah. We, you know, it's one of those ones where if one person goes off, but everyone else has a quiet game, it's not it, too it's bad. It's okay. It can be okay as long as it's not too bad of a like killing spree. Yeah. Like, you know, if they go like have like a scoring record, then it can still be bad. Yeah. But yeah, they, you know, it's just one. Of, it was one of those endings where they saved the. They were the superheroes, I guess. Yeah. Do you know what they did? And not including, um, it's not just threes, but they had one and one play, and then also that annoying foul on um, Skyler. Yeah. They had seven three point plays in a row. So I think they hit five threes, and then they hit one and one, and then the three free throws as well in a row. Yeah, it started with um, White, didn't it? Yeah, so Skyler yeah. White hit three straight threes yeah. to start that. Yeah. Um, and After then. Being doing nothing the whole absolutely game. Absolutely nothing. So frustrating yeah. because when we, I spoke to Coach in the interview and he was talking about sort of concentration and, and knowing personnel and we did a great job of that and for 30 minutes and then you sort of, you, you you know, you switch off for literally, you know, two minutes and that's all it takes for these matchups and the tendencies, you know, playing tendencies, you know Skylar White's going to shoot that three-point jump shot at the top of the key. Mm. He did it in the trophy final. Um, that's what cost us games. However, saying that, of, with, with, with the lapse in concentration, we were still running right in there at the end with the chance to win it on the buzzer. Yeah. Do, do you know what? And one thing you can you can only ask for in that situation is a good look, right? And yeah. Levi had like yeah. an unbelievably good look. He, yeah, he had an open free. 100%. Boom. And it's it's like, you know, people going to miss like that's part of the game and um I think anyone on our team would trust him to shoot that shot again. Like, yeah. you know, there's no doubt in that. What do you reckon? Should we could have been a foul in there, do you reckon? Yeah. No? Oh, I, can I say? Am I? <laughs> I mean, you can. It's, it's all post game now. I know. We're not. We're not. Set. Yeah. White fouled him. You could, I mean, you could. Oh, have, well, you could no. Have white easy. sent straight after the game. He's like, yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> like you could easily. He was, like, was, yeah. like, was like, yeah. Like, yeah. Was like, but that's the game, isn't it? It happens. Yeah. It, that's the game. The annoying thing, though, and I say, yeah, he fouled him. But the one that Levi fouled him and he got the free free throws. It was almost like Levi ran out to him, ran past him, and on the way past, he actually he gave him a tap on the back. Did you notice that? Playing yeah, exactly. like, as a like a sort of us annoying him past him, and that's what the foul was called for, not for like. It, oh. Yeah, he no, didn't I like didn't, go out I and hit know. him. It was just no. like a little like bound him, and they hit if, him on. If I'm playing devil's advocate as well, though, there's a t uh, Trajan Jacob screen before that as he, as Tijon's bringing the ball up, so the ball gets inbounded to Tijon. Trajan yeah. Jacob sets yeah. the screen, and he sort of turns, so you, you yeah. could have easily called that as the, an offensive the, the foul. Moving. Yeah, the yeah. moving screen as well. Don't play devil's advocate, uh, but John, okay? like yeah. uh, you know, no, there, there was a lot but, of. But I know that's been a big. T uh, so I've been in meetings with officials this yeah. year, and they've briefed commentators and said, "Look, here's the things we're looking out for this season." And the landing space foul is was one of the things that they really were there's, trying to push. There's, there's, there's. Um, that and the unsportsmanlike clear path foul was the two areas where they wanted to sort of really create some clarity on. Um, but obviously it didn't turn out that way. It's all hypothetical because eventually, you know, if we hadn't had let Skylar White shoot those threes and you know, we wouldn't be in that position anyway, and you sort of, when it comes down to the last possession of a game, you're always going to put it in the hands yeah. of the basketball gods. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was a frustrating one. 76 to 78, the final score. Tevin Ellison, 23 points, eight rebounds, four assists. Brad Green, 11 points, 16 rebounds. T. John Lucas, 14 points and six assists. 16 rebounds is a joke. That's yeah, just, I know. It just is a joke. <laughs> he literally <laughs> Just eats him up for breakfast, doesn't Tough. he? I think it was one game he had like a double double before half time, like with five minutes to go in the half. Was it last week we we're talking about? Yeah, the last podcast? week we literally he had a double double. Uh, and also in this game, I think he had in one of these games he was on something like ten and nine by the half. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, mm. So that kind of takes us on to Sunday. Uh, Sunday, Surrey Scorchers, um, less than twenty four hour turnaround between these two games. We finished our game. I think I got home by about quarter past eleven. I was back in SGS at. Um, 11 a.m. because of the women's game to 12.30. But then obviously the men's team were at, what, 2.30? 4.30. 4.30. Yeah. Um, Flyers ending their doubleheader weekend. 91, 94-81 lost Surrey Scorchers. Uh, and Surrey put together um, uh, a bonkers three-point shooting display, really. I'm sorry. Six from six from Quinn Cooper. That's that's horrible. But you know, yeah, the, 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 uh, we always figure this on the way up, though. Like, the, the you know... A player like Quinn Cooper, that's what he does. He catches and shoots freeze. And that again, it's tendencies and playing tendencies. Yeah. You've got to overplay that in that situation. Like yeah, but let, no one's expected to go six from six. I mean, like, he, he came straight in off the bench and just hit a fade in 
three points yeah. on a corner. In but, the he's, but it's not like so he hasn't done this to us. That's what he does. But it's not like he hasn't done this to us in the first two times we met them. Do you know what I mean? If it was like if it was like some random, if if you're playing Manchester and flipping, what's the legend of Burton starts hitting five from five three? My guy, you know. Yeah, no, no disrespect, but he's not shooting a three, is he? That's my guy. That's my guy. But like, but you know, like I mean, I mean, Raf and I did a game the week before. It's Surrey versus Sheffield. We were commentating on it, and Quinn Cooper's hitting threes. So we know we. We're all seeing exactly. Yeah, but the percentages we played. You played the percentages, right? I get it. Right. I hear what you're saying. And the, the trouble is, when they hit those percentages, the, the chance of us winning a game is going to be low. Well, so a little, no. sta- little stat for you: at the end of the third quarter, they were shooting 60 percent from three at the end of the third, and that's when they had their lead. They only turned the ball over twice in the second half. You know, when they shoot threes like that at high clip, uh, regardless of what, how the defense is playing you, and they're not turning the ball over, and we can't get out and break, it's going to be a long night for any for any team. I think any team that shoots 60 percent on you and doesn't turn the ball over it's gonna be a long night yeah we, we there's moments where we'd like we we were actually playing okay we were getting but they were hitting a three then we come back and hit a two three two like we weren't not yeah. scoring at points it was just like they weren't missing anything at moments yeah, we, we wasn't really hitting our shots yeah. and but that's what they do that's, that's what they do though they are they take the most threes in a game and sometimes they that like but when they are on they are on so and they've actually strung together a bunch of wins haven't they Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have. What's their uh, win record? Yeah, well, no. let's take a look at it. Producer Dan, you can get up on the screen. Here's what the results have done to the weekend's schedule. Uh, this was after the Caledonia-Leicester game, so that's why they're highlighted on screen. Um, but the pair of wins for Surrey brings them up to 10 and 15. Flyers, a pair of defeats at the weekend, puts them on 11 and 14 in seventh. So Surrey are now just one win behind the Flyers. They also have the head-to-head now because obviously winning that game over Bristol. So uh, Flyers are still tied on wins with Sheffield, who are in six. A pair of wins for Newcastle at the weekend puts them up to 5th on 13 and 11. London Lions, by the way, are just two results away from winning the league title right now. Uh, of course, it is London Lions on uh, Saturday, SGS College Wise Arena, 8pm tip-off. If you haven't got a ticket, you can always watch the game on YouTube, 8pm. Uh, there's also, by the way, Sam, and I've got to go through ticket info here because this is ridiculous. I was looking at tickets for the rest of the season. There's only 60 tickets left for the following game against Surrey Scorchers on March 2nd, 8 p.m. And there's only 12 tickets left for the following game against Leicester Riders on Sunday, March 10th. Then after that, there's only 60 tickets left for the game against Plymouth on March 30th. Then after that, there's only 50 tickets left for the game against London on April 7th. Then just 20 tickets left for the game against Manchester on April 13th. And finally, there's just 70 tickets left for our last home game of the regular season. And breathe. That is actually mental. So basically, the moral of the story is, if you want to get tickets to watch Bristol Flyers, go get them right now because they will sell out um, and they will sell out quick. And if you remember last year, we'd sold out our last six games of the regular season by around this sort of time. So um, they are going to sell. So just if you want to go watch Flyers and you haven't got a ticket and you're not a season ticket holder, just pick the games you want to go watch now. I can't stress it enough. And uh, yeah, Mm -hmm. bristolflyers.co.uk. Uh, other news we've got to get through, uh, all-star voting. This week is the last week to get your all-star votes in before voting ends on February 15th. You can still have your say on who makes the all-star starting lineups for Team North and Team South. Our Flyers players need your support. Brad Green still leads the way at the centre position, Sam. Uh, how do you think Brad will get on in the all-star game? See him shooting some three balls? All-star You'd game, isn't it? you be surprised, you know. He does oh shoot threes, isn't it? Oh, my God, listen. The man can shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to him. Yo, I don't like, yeah, don't, don't, don't doubt his freeze. And I'm not saying that he should go out there and shoot friggin' 10. I'm just saying he might hit one. Uh, right. And Sam, it, on that note, it's time for us to get to the mailbag. You're listening to the Bristol Flyers podcast. Right. Time for us to round up this week's episode. Quite a long one this week, Sam. Uh, but how, how long is it? I don't know. I'm not counting. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've got time for us to get to the mailbag. We deep dive into the questions. Uh, producer Dan, have a think about a question to ask for Royal Graham Bell. Um, but first question is from Nathan dot R Popple eleven on Instagram. What's the best thing about playing basketball? Great question. Playing. What's the best thing about playing? Playing. Uh, playing. <laughs> No, just the play, <laughs> just the like, honestly, yeah, I mean, like, asking, <laughs> you, like you just think about like you get to do what you love as a job in it. Like that's like a lot of people wish they could do that, and uh, you know, appreciate it. Oh, yeah, that'd Come be nice, on. wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, who's been in touch. Melita Emmanuel Carr has been in touch. It was on Instagram. Come on, where's she playing now? Uh, Sharks. 
Is he? Yeah. Sheffield Shark. Uh, Sheffield yeah. Hatters. Yeah. That's what they're called. Just yeah. had a big game, actually. Yeah, is it? Is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's been in touch with a couple of questions. First one, what's your favourite childhood memory in basketball? Favourite? Yeah. I started at 15, so childhood memory. Uh, Still a child at 15. I know. You know bro. what? My first, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but uh, first, my first dunk, probably. Is like, it? Yeah, like, I, dun- I dunked at what, like, 13, I think. But, so... Yeah, doing that for the first time was like, yeah, hype. What, what, what situation was it? Was it just like you going up against the hoop? Was I, it, was you know in-game? what? I, I just kind of said like, cause I didn't really play basketball, didn't ever anything. And then um, one time we just did basketball in school and I was like, you know what? Let me see if I could dunk this. Like, that's it. They make it look easy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, let me try and I did it. I was like, okay. Were you cool. tall at 13 as well? Uh, I was like, probably like six foot. Ah, that is oh, crazy. That's, that's, that's a big thirteen-year-old. Yeah. Uh, the the, the yeah. other question she asks was, "What's your favorite dunk you've ever done?" So I guess that kind of uh, answers both questions. Uh, honey dip. The honey dip. Honey dip. In a game. Oh, in a game. Well, no, what? no, I did. No, no, no. I did. Uh, reverse windmill on someone's head. Was it? Yeah. Well, what? What's he Where's doing? this? That was like under sixteen. So oh, actually. Okay. actually, no. Is it tape? I did that in, in Spain. I did that in, yeah. I've done that a few times, actually. You got tape? Yeah, it'll be there somewhere. Yeah. Like it's, I've done it a few times. If you can find I'll it for us after, we'll put that on the, we'll put that on the tape yeah, right I'll now. Let's 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, same. That's my favourite dunk I've ever done. <laughs> that's, yeah, that, that, that's Same, Because you don't really realise you're doing it. You're just doing a reverse and then you're like, you're right. You don't realise you're going to do a reverse 360 windmill. No, like no, you just, no. Yeah, no, don't really realise. Like, I'm up here. I might. I, like, I, tr- no, I tread. Because you you're not trying to do the trick. You're trying to make the hoop and then the basket. And then you're like, oh, actually, you watch it back. And that's when you're like, oh, that's why everyone got... Like, it looked like I fully committed <sighs> to that. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, I just hate it when you trip over, John. You accidentally oh, no, windmill. Yeah, you act- <laughs> yeah, when you trip over and accidentally windmill reverse on someone's head. <laughs> uh, Schnackman Matt, shout out Schnackman Matt. He'll love them sweets. Uh, he wants to know um, what's your favourite place to eat out in Bristol? Uh, rice and things. Rice and yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. That's where me. I'm at. That's where I'm at. Have you shown all the boys that? Yeah, everyone. What? I Everyone's already on it. Les put me on to uh, that. Uh, so, yes. yeah. Yeah, of course, man. Les did. Les has yeah, been going for I, years. I said it from a rip like when I got here. I was like, yo, where can I go get some, some real food? Yeah, Les has been, uh, yeah, Les is always down there. That, that, that place, place is, I don't know, it's crazy how good it is. Yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. If you've never been, it's like sort of right at the bottom of um, Cheltenham Road, near Gloucester Road, and it's next to, I don't really know. It's, there's a, Pub next to it, oh, yeah. but it's like just yeah. the corner of like a traffic light. Like. It's so good. Yeah. It's a bit weird if you've never been before how you order, but you'll just go in and be fine. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Who would win in a fight, Batman or Superman? <laughs> we actually had this conversation on the bus, didn't we? Yo, this conversation been so many times, <laughs> and it gets heated. Oh. It's obvious. S- yeah, Superman. It's Superman. I don't Superman. know why it's even an argument. Yeah. What do you think? Just Dan, Superman or Batman? It is Superman. It, like, I'm it, sorry. It you is talk Superman. About, if you talk about scenarios, majority of the time it will be Superman. But if we're going to talk about like Batman's prepared. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman's winning. Well, Superman's got superhuman powers. You can't Batman is ridiculously intelligent, super rich, yeah, and yeah. he has a utility belt that if he's prepared for, yeah. his suit is probably kryptonite. Yeah. No. But, yeah. Oh. That's, what I if oh. he's, that's why I said, if he's prepared. Like if he's sleeping in his bed. No, then he's done. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. So every majority of situations, he's losing. But yeah, if yeah. he's prepared, I don't see him losing. Yeah, but what about how far away does Superman's laser eyes work? Because if he's like, is it, um, his kryptonite wouldn't hit him first, right? Surely the laser eyes go further than the kryptonite. Yeah, but Superman's stupid. Have you seen the times how he's been like beat up? Come on, man. He literally runs up to the guy's like, oh, you have something green. <laughs> it's, uh, it's always like the same thing. So I don't it's see stupid. him beating Batman when it comes to intelligence. Okay, got you. Got you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> here's a question for you. Um, last question uh, before we get to one for Bruce Dan. Will you be staying next season? Um, There's a possibility. We just have to wait and see. Ooh. I mean, that's not a yes or no. That's just never say never. But it's also, possible. the future is big. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's like that's like the out there question. So I will just have to PC it. Now. Yeah, there we yeah. go. So watch this space. Who knows? I don't know. Sam doesn't know. But we'll know in the summer when the season's over, and that's when we talk about that sort of yes. stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> P yeah. Dizzle.
producer Dan, what you got for us? Now, earlier on, we were talking boxing. And you're on about how much you enjoy boxing. Yeah. I just got to know two things. Who's right. your favorite boxer? Yeah. First off. Yeah. Currently. Currently. Yeah. Oh, um, damn, probably Javante Davis. Mm. Okay. The tank. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, the finally, there's a big fight on the horizon. Yeah. Fury Usyk. Yeah. If it happens. It, yeah, he's not, it's currently been, I think, postponed. He got it's postponed. Game. They've they've arranged it for May. Yeah, he got his face bust over yeah. the training. Uh, Fully fit, who wins? I think Usyk. Ooh. I think Usyk. Usyk. Yeah, Usyk. Yeah, yeah, I do think so. I think Usyk. Um, I think Jake Paul wins. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Come on. I, don't even, I knew nah, that would get don't, you. Don't even, I knew. Man. Don't even, man. I don't even like when people talk about that in him in the form of boxing. I just leave it, let it be, man. Like, it's whatever. <laughs> it's just, it's just whatever, man. Well, should we end the podcast on that note then, shall we? Yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> I'll know, like Jake Paul. <laughs> uh, Ro, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Oh, yeah, uh, best of luck with the rest of your recovery. Thank Fingers you. crossed, see you back on court. ASAP. We need you out there, my man. Uh, Sam, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Good episode. N- anytime, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> right, he's not. He's not going to be here. He's got. Uh, to be fair, he's uh, he's off to Dublin now, aren't you? So. Well, my flight. My flight's at seven, so yeah, so I've got, got a few hours yeah. left. Yeah. Uh, Producer Dan, great. thank you for pushing the buttons as always. Uh, thanks to Raf Thomas Edwards for joining us uh, very briefly at the start of this week's show. Uh, anything else to want to add before we wrap up this show? No, no good. Uh, that's going to do it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're listening on all major podcast providers um, and on YouTube as well. Uh, Sam and I'll be back. What next week? We're back next week uh, for another episode of the Bristol Flyers podcast so from Joel Sam and producer Dan we'll see you next time thanks to Web Gains